this is getting some attention on Twitter and the like. Cody Rhodes believes that MJF will end up in WWE eventually. And this is on the main page right now of the website, WrestlingObserver.com. Posted up there by Ian Carey. Rhodes appeared on the Michael K Show. I hate Michael K as a baseball announcer. I'm sure he's a very wonderful man. And this is not a Yankee thing. I just can't stand it as long as far. I just, oh, get out. Get out. Anyway, uh, Rhodes was on Michael K's show and was asked about his former rival and the current AEW world champion, MJF. Rhodes said, quote, I think one day we will see MJF in WWE. For those who don't know, MJF was one of my recruits and probably the one I'm most excited about just because of his potential, his personality, his overall professionalism is beaming. One thing I'm proud of for him doing is if you'll notice, he's put on a lot of muscle and it's been put on safely over the last year and a half. And when he cut, when he does make that jump, and I don't know when that is, if he makes the jump, but if he comes to WWE, you have to stand across from guys like Drew McIntyre. You have to stand across from guys like Omas or gosh, Brock Lesnar, end quote. See the end quote there? The gosh was his. I didn't even add that in. Golly gee gosh, Brock Lesnar. Rhodes continued to suggest that MJF may have gained size in anticipation of eventually signing with WWE. Quote, watching him grow physically, it seems like maybe he knows where his future lies. But really, your guess is as good as mine. I never bother him about it because I just want to remain the friends we've become today, end quote. What would you expect Cody Rhodes to say? What would you expect him to say? I would like for him to join. I can see him joining at some point. Sure, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Maybe subconsciously. Uh, through Paul and through uh, Vince while Vince was still there that has dripped into the, the Rhodes bloodline that, you know, you, you got to look a certain way, but it's a cosmetic business and WWE will not stop being a cosmetic business. So I guess Cody felt the need to point that out about MJF, who has gotten much more swole. <laughs> yes, he has. Uh, so where will MJF go? I have no idea. Just the one thing I know is... The War of 24 uh, that was cooked up uh, earlier on uh, this year, however long it was going on for, and thankfully has now gone away. I hope it continues to stay away. AEW Rampage is on TNT tonight with matches taped after Dynamite this past Wednesday at College Park Center in Arlington, Texas. This is your no-spoilers lineup. Six-man tag team match. Orange Cassidy... Marshall Von Erich and Ross Von Erich in Texas against Angelo Parker, Matt Menard, who just lost in their hometown last week, and Jake Hager. Again, no spoilers needed. The Don Callis family of Kyle Fletcher and Powerhouse Hobbs will face Hunter Gray and Paul Titan. Again, no spoilers. Anna Jay will face off against Red Velvet and Penta El Zero Miedo and Commander, along with E.L. Del Vikingo, they will face off against Action Andretti and Top Flight Dante and Darius Martin. Tomorrow, AEW Collision Winter is Coming is live from TNT, which is also from the Curtis Colwell Center in Garland, Texas. Continental Classic Blue League matches, Claudio Castagnoli against Andrade El Idolo, Eddie Kingston against Daniel Garcia, and Brian Danielson against Brody King. The Continental Classic is wrapping up. We really have three shows left that will have matches on them. Uh, two from the blue block, one from the gold block. And, you know, it could actually end this weekend if Andrade were to win then it's over, uh, I believe. If Andrade wins and Brian Danielson wins, they're both in. And that would leave an entire day next Saturday with matches that don't matter. And it could happen, absolutely. I just don't believe that it will. I believe that Eddie Kingston is going to work his way back. And when I look at my final four, I think it's going to be from the gold block, John Moxley 
and Jay White, and from the blue block, Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston. And to get to that point, this weekend, I believe Claudio will beat Andrade, who's got nine points. I believe that Brian Danielson will defeat Brody King, and that will give Danielson nine and keep Brody at six. And then Eddie Kingston will defeat Daniel Garcia, giving Kingston six points. And he's already lost to Brody King. So then everything would come down to the 23rd. And I can already see in my mind, with what I picked for this Saturday, how this show is going to play out. At the beginning of Collision, you're going to get a promo, that cold open promo from Eddie Kingston, saying it's all on the line. You know, I've rallied back up. You know, humble in victory, humble in defeat, but I can't see putting all of this on the line and and fighting through and coming up short. But everything is going to be stacked against him. And the first match of the night, do Brian Danielson against Claudio. Have Brian Danielson win. That way he's in. That's out of the way for the night. Then it gets down to Brody King and Garcia. Garcia would have no points going into that night. I can't see him being skunked. I think he defeats Brody King. I don't know how you do it. Maybe far off in the distance, it's the House of Black and FTR fighting. I don't know what it is. But Daniel Garcia gets the victory and ends up doing his dance. And then it comes down to Kingston and Andrade with the winner of that match going on to the semifinals out of the blue block. And that's how I believe Eddie Kingston will get himself into the tournament. When it comes to next Wednesday... In the gold division, I think it's pretty simple. I think Jay White wins against John Moxley. And I think Roosh and Swerve fight to a double disqualification. And I know people might that might be cheap to some people and all that, but guess what? We haven't had a draw yet. We haven't had a situation where both guys end up with one point. And by doing that, you can still play into Moxley and White in the main event and who could advance. When it comes to Jay Lethal and Mark Briscoe, I'm going with Mark Briscoe just because Sandy Ford, Sussex County. Orange sold the knee, which is, he got attacked. I don't remember him getting attacked. Matt Menard said he was attacked the night before, which would have been ROH. So it's probably ROH. Are you smoking or what's happening what? here? I don't, what the fuck? What is, is happening? I have no Bro. Clue. What is this? <laughs> Dude. Like there's not, I've changed nothing. Smoking is room. bad enough for you, but you don't need <laughs> right. to do it on the air. What is happening here? God. I, I'm glad I'm not the only one experiencing this. Did you die? <laughs> I've ascended. Yeah. I don't know. And it looks like it's changing colors too, which is weird. It's going from red to blue. What the hell's flashing? I don't know, man. Yeah, everyone's saying this, shut man. your lines, dude. They're completely closed. Oh, my God. Maybe I open them. What is... There we go. The sun moved? Well, uh, yeah, the sun... Actually, the... No! Earth... Oh. Okay. The sun will continue to move, <laughs> and then we'll be able to see again. <laughs> We then had uh, Abaddon take on Trish Adora. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.